Welcome to Learning to Engineer. In this video, we are going to see the conditions to achieve maximum power transfer. When you have a load which has a resistance and a impedance, in that case, what should be the value of the resistance and the impedance in order to achieve maximum power transfer? In the previous video, we saw the maximum power transfer theorem which states that when the source's internal resistance and the load's resistance is same, maximum power will be transferred to that load. We saw some examples and we even solved a problem by applying this theorem. When you have a AC network, and it has a impedance and a resistance. How should the impedance be adjusted to get the maximum power transfer? Or if you are planning to adjust the resistance, what should be this resistance to achieve maximum power transfer? That we are going to see in this video. Let's get started. In the previous video, we saw that the Thevenin's resistance of the source should be same as the load's resistance. Only then maximum power will be transferred. This holds good only for DC circuits. When you have AC circuits, we have impedance and capacitance. In that case, what should we do is, we should just write the equation for power for those loads and then find out the condition at which maximum power occurs. When I have an equation like this, y is equal to 4x square plus 3x, I am trying to find the value of x for which y is maximum. When the maxima occurs, the slope of the curve will be 0. Say for example, you have a curve like this. Okay, and in this point, and in this point, the slope is 0 because the curve is parallel to x axis. So, in these two points, the slope is 0. So, to find that, we are finding the derivative of it. Slope is nothing but the derivative of it, right? So, we are equating it to 0 and finding out the value of x for which this holds good. So, that value of x will give the maximum value of y. So, in our, this case, we will find dy by dx which will be 4 into 2x plus 3 which is 8x plus 3. So for the slope to be 0 what should be the value of x? We can find it out by equating it to 0 and then finding out the value of x. x will be minus 3 by 8. At 3 by 8 the curve will have its maximum value. So this is how we found out the maxima of a curve. Same concept will be used here to find the condition for maximum power. We are going to find out at what value of resistance and at what value of impedance will the source give maximum power to the load. Same concept is going to be applied here. Power is I square R. When you have an AC circuit, the average power will be half into modulus of I square or the magnitude of I square into the load resistance. Let me write it down. Power will be half into the magnitude of the load's current square times the load resistance. This is what is the formula to find out the power. So, when we find the derivative of this and then equate it to 0, we can find out the value of RL in this equation. So, this will give us the condition to get maximum power. What is IL? Current is voltage divided by total resistance. So, IL will be VTH divided by RTH plus RL plus J XTH plus XL. Right? So, this is the value of the current. What is the magnitude of this? The magnitude of this will be the square root of real part square plus imaginary part square. So, the magnitude of IL will be VTH divided by square root of RTH plus RL whole square 
plus x t h plus x l whole square. So here we have two variable terms. One is the resistance and the impedance. We can either vary the resistance to achieve maximum power or we can vary the value of impedance to achieve maximum power. Whatever is the case, whatever we are aiming to, we need to differentiate the power with respect to that term. So the power will be half Vth square RL divided by the square of this will be RTH plus RL whole square plus XTH plus XL whole square. Take for example, I am planning to vary the load resistance alone and I am having the load impedance constant. In that case, my variable is this term. So, I need to find out the slope of the curve with respect to this resistance. So, this is my x and this is my y of the previous example. Okay. So, in that case, partial derivative of P with respect to RL will be 0 at P max. Okay. So, we are going to do that now. I have just squared the denominator and then I will write the denominator later on. So, this is the denominator times the derivative of numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. I am trying to differentiate the denominator with respect to RL alone. Others are considered to be constants. So, this term will be RTH square plus RL square plus 2RTH into RL and I hope you all know that if you differentiate this term this will be 0 because this is a constant. So I am trying to differentiate this part alone. If you differentiate you will be getting 2RL plus 2RTH. Okay. So this is the derivative of the denominator. I have written it here. So, if the numerator term equals 0, we can find out the value of RL for which that holds good. So, this implies that I am just multiplying RL to the inside which is 2RTH RL plus 2 into RL square. So, in this term, I can cancel the VTH square by 2 on both sides and now I will have this term which is RTH square plus RL square plus 2 RTH RL. I am just expanding this term hoping to cancel it with the right hand side. Okay, and I am not disturbing the x term or the xth and xtl term because even when we reduce that term, it is not going to get cancelled anyways. Okay, so here we only have terms which are getting added, right? So in that case, we can cancel out few terms. 2RTH RL and 2RTH RL can be cancelled out. So, we want the value of RL for which maximum power is transferred. So, for that, this implies that I will get RTH square minus RL square plus XTH plus XL whole square equals 0. So, this implies that the value of RL should be the square root of this term. So, we have now found out the value of the load resistance when adjusted to give the maximum power to it. So, when RL is equal to the square root of RTH square plus XTH plus XL whole square when RL's value is this, maximum power will be transferred to this circuit. Now, I am planning to keep the resistance constant and if I want to change the value of the impedance alone, we need to differentiate this power with respect to XL. 
because our variable is xl we are trying to change the value of xl such that maximum power is achieved so the dependent variable is uh, power and the independent variable will be xl okay so now we are going to differentiate the power with respect to xl okay If I find out the derivative of this with respect to xl, I will be getting chi square the denominator and I am just going to write the numerator and differentiate denominator. If I differentiate the denominator, I will be getting this term to be 0 and I will get this as 2 times xth plus 2 times xl similar to what we did earlier. Okay. Minus, I am just going to write the denominator and if I differentiate the numerator, we will be getting it as 0. So, this equation we are equating it to 0 and solving for xl now. Okay. So, if I do that, I will be getting this term to be 0. Okay. Which is Vth square into Rl divided by 2 times 2xth plus 2xl equals 0. So, when this term equals 0, this is already 0 and when this term is 0, we will be getting the value of maximum power. Okay. So, for that, what is the value of xl? It is, I am just cancelling it out the twos. So, this implies that when xth is equal to minus xl, maximum power will be transferred. Okay. So, when xl is equal to minus of xth, maximum power will be transferred. Okay. So, now I hope you understand the conditions of maximum power transfer theorem when you have a positive load. Okay. So, now you can say that when the source's impedance is equal to the complex conjugate of the load's impedance or the source's thevenin resistance or the thevenin impedance, in the source's thevenin impedance is same as the conjugate of the load's thevenin impedance, you can get maximum power over there. So now, we have seen the condition to achieve maximum power transfer in an inductive load. Furthermore, if you want to understand the maximum power transfer theorem applied to AC circuits, you need to understand the basics of complex number algebra. Okay, so for that you can just check this link or you can just check for this video in my channel. Okay, thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section and do give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Thank you.